Georgetown's a fun neighborhood in Seattle. It's actually, I think, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Seattle, or if not the oldest. Neighborhoods like this are the places to be. There's a series of really great dive bars. Cool industrial buildings. Airplanes. <laughs> Plenty of airplanes. There's a lot of passionate people here. Seattle is a place where if you have an idea, people are interested in helping you fulfill that idea. The history of Georgetown, it goes way back to a lot of manufacturing early on. There's old bottling plants here. It's cool to you know, be manufacturing in this neighborhood. This is the hard mill shop. Come on in. My brother and I started hard mill about 10 years ago now. Our motto is durable goods of lasting quality. Everything that we make, we want it to last and hopefully be passed down one day. That's the goal. I actually received my great grandfather's cleaver. He's on his farm day in and day out and my grandpa gave it to me. I just was really inspired by that. Aprons were the first product we started making. And it's my brother, Michael, who we started the business together. I was cooking at home, wearing my mom's apron, and just like, yeah, this isn't quite doing it for me. So I started looking around for a good sturdy apron to wear at home. Didn't really find anything out there that fit what I was looking for. And so we started coming up with our own designs. Bought an industrial sewing machine and put it in our garage and started making aprons. I like working with my hands. Before this, I was actually an EMT I moved to Seattle, worked for an ambulance company for a while. He was driving for 24-hour shifts, come home and sleep a little bit, and then we'd get back out sewing aprons and cutting leather. I was doing both at the same time, and then eventually transitioned to full-time hard mill. We were in our garage for probably about two years working out of there. We always have just loved Georgetown as a neighborhood, so when we found this space, it just felt like a really natural fit. We loved that this building in particular is old. We're trying to make things that will be old one day, so it just kind of fit. Hard Mill, they're newer in the neighborhood, but they have amazing stuff. Their cast iron collection pours my heart. I think that the people in Georgetown are supportive of one another, and they're also protective of the culture here. This is a cool part of town because everyone finishes work and goes to the bar and everyone knows everyone. I'm usually in Georgetown because I own a restaurant and bar. Welcome to Fonda La Catrina. Food is cultural and it brings everyone together. You sit at the table and you can have a conversation with people you don't know and have a meal that you can bond over. My partner missed his hometown, Mexico City. He just really missed the food. I am coming from a family that we cook always. In my culture, food is the way that we identify, the way that we recognize people, the way that we share with people, that, that we tie together. I met Enrique on the corner outside this restaurant. He was actually working in a construction site across the street and saw this little place go up for rent. I was literally walking down the street. We locked eyes and one thing led to another and we ended up being married a year later. And then we opened the restaurant together. The community was really behind us and they would check in on us all the time. All of a sudden we're like, well, we can't let them down. And then once we opened the door, they came in and they brought their friends and the neighborhood became our first regulars. Fonda La Catrina is one of my favorite restaurants in Seattle. It's uh, affordable and uh, delicious. Georgetown's really the last blue collar bohemian arts community left in Seattle. I find myself in Georgetown almost daily because I run a business here. Welcome to Santa Graphics Bookstore. Most people associate comics with superheroes and we do very little to none of that. This is a showroom for Fanta Graphics Books, publisher of comics and graphic novels that's been based in Seattle since 1989. We've published books from artists all around the world. As diverse as this work is, I like to think it's fairly cohesive. Our comics have elements of surrealism and, of course, humor. They're personal stories, uh, oftentimes memoirs. They're really not that different from contemporary literature. Turning the page, the smell of the ink, none of that is available with that digital media. So we try to make our books sort of special. We approach them like art objects from the texture of the paper to the cover design. We try to reflect the artist's intention there. 
My daughter Isabella is uh, helping out today. Just graduated college and I couldn't be prouder of her. <laughs> I grew up going to work with my dad when I was like 12 and 13 and reading like Ghost World and like the hate comics, which is definitely something I should not have been reading that young. There's a really interesting thread of debauchery in a lot of the Fantagraphics titles. Definitely some stuff that inspired me to get to no good when I was a teenager. I'm often amazed at people who say that they visited Seattle specifically to come to the store. It makes me a little nervous. I feel like I should do a little song and dance for him. The Georgetown arts community has really made not just the bookstore, but also the neighborhood a major destination. In the 70s, Seattle was nationally known as a fishing village where we made airplanes. That started to change in the 80s. Our little corner of the country became a magnet for bright young people. It was this wonderful convergence of art, music, fashion. Seattle's changed a lot. I couldn't really conceive of living anywhere else.